Local programming on KRWG made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Anthony Moreno. The New Mexico legislature is set to convene later this month and one of the many issues that is already expected to be discussed is the repeal of the law allowing for undocumented immigrants to obtain driver's licenses in the state. Our first guest today is working on a bill that would repeal that law, making it illegal for undocumented immigrants to obtain a New Mexico driver's license. Please welcome Republican State Representative-elect Andy Nunez. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. It's good. Good to be here. Thank you. Now I'd like to uh, start off a little bit. If you could talk with us a little bit about the differences between this bill and the one that mm -hmm. you had um, presented originally in 2011. Well, the big differences I think is that the, on this bill here, it's not quite as strict as the one that we had in 2011. They're going to be able to, some of the people that already have a driver's license that are illegally here, they will be distinguished by a certain license and uh, but the coming in anyone that new ones are coming in they're going to still be restricted they have to have their social security number and it's going to have to be required for them to show that they are new mexico residents and that they uh, they are legal let's talk a little bit more about this now you're saying that there's going to be perhaps two different licenses that will be available i believe that's what the, the representative pacheco has put into this bill yeah Okay, now it's for certain foreign citizens. Uh, could you tell me a little bit more about um, what does that mean and how does it really um, describe which um, on person is going to get the different uh, licenses? Well, the whole thing is that the biggest part of these people that are coming into New Mexico to try to get a driver's license that are illegal, they're not from New Mexico. Biggest part of them are from out of state and uh, different people are bringing them in, charging them money to come to New Mexico to get driver's license. And that's a big problem. You know, it's not the people that are here. We got people that have been working here and living here and those are gonna be treated okay. You know, we're gonna take care of them folks. But it's those that are just coming in and wanting to get driver's license. And the biggest part of them, like I say, aren't even from New Mexico. And why should New Mexico be issuing driver's license to people from all over other countries? It's not just Mexico. Everybody thinks this is strictly against Mexico. It's not. And we've had them from China, Europe, all over Europe, Canadians, Brazilians. Brazilians, there's a lot of them trying to come in. And so we've, we've had them from all over the world wanting to New Mexico to get a driver's license. And, and, that, that's, and there's no telling who's going to come in, you know. Now, what is your, um, you know, original reason for starting this this push for this bill i mean besides the folks coming in from um, out of state to or out of the country to obtain a driver's license well the big reason was that we started this way back when is because they these coyotes we call them you know are we're bringing people from all over trying to come in and get driver's license and then when you get in one case in albuquerque we had 28 people with the same address in other words these coyotes brought them and housed them in these houses and, and uh, it's just abusing it, and we don't know who's coming in. You know, it could be ISIS people, you know, and anybody else, you know. So when we presented this bill in 2011, every uh, uh, agency in the state of New Mexico that had legal authority, you know, law enforcement authority, from the federal, state, county, and the municipal cops, all of them, every one of them come and testified for this bill. The only law enforcement individual that uh, that testified f against the bill was the uh, the chief of police of Santa Fe County, and uh, I mean Santa Fe, the city of Santa Fe, and the reason he was is because his boss, the mayor, testified against it just before he did. So if he wanted to keep his job, he had to testify. That's the only policeman that we've had testify in favor of this bill against it. So are you saying this is a public is uh, safety issue or security issue? Absolutely, so it's a public issue from all over. And okay. the governor has stressed that since the very beginning. Now, is there, um, you know, from what you're saying is that people who are undocumented are not going to be able to get a driver's license. However, they will be eligible for possibly a driver's permit. Is that what this bill is about? Well, some of them they may get a temporary. Yeah. 
So it's a temporary yeah, right. driving permit. The old bill is the same way. Students that are here from other foreign countries, they can get a driver's license during for their stay while they're here. Okay. They've always uh, the old bill and this bill does the same thing. Are there any age requirements for this bill? No, just old enough to get a driver's license. A regular New Mexico regular New driver's, driver's license. license. Yes, okay. and they have to pass the driver's test and written and driver's test both. Okay, yeah. I see. Um, how big of a problem do you think this is in the state? Well, it's not near the problem it was before, because we had the bill up, and and we've had a lot of the the uh, the uh, uh, law enforcement agencies are keeping an eye on it, because they were all they were all for the bill, because and you know some people say well they, these people they 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 can't get a driver insurance, the insurance has nothing to do with this thing, and I think New Mexico State ran a study here about three years ago, that uh, it didn't make any difference. The, the changes were none in the, in the insurance. You know, you can go and get insurance, you pay one month of insurance, and, and that's it, and then they drop it. So you are, you, it. are you concerned, though, that there may be um, folks driving without insurance uh, oh. if this bill does pass, more, more people? Yeah, if the bill passes, there'll be more of them voting, driving without them. Right now, even local residents are driving without them. Matter of fact, a month ago, my wife got run into by a citizen, and. He had his license plate and everything, but didn't have no, no insurance, I see. driver's license and everything. But uh, so the insurance portion is, uh, to me, is uh, is nothing to be considered in this bill. Are you concerned that if this is available for, um, if this bill does pass, and um, there is a possibility for undocumented uh, immigrants living here in New Mexico to obtain the driver's permit, are you concerned that um, if they do obtain the driver's permit, that perhaps you know, they uh, could be fall into a position where they might be um, uh, pointed out as undocumented and maybe afraid to um, get involved with anything that has to do with the authorities, whether uh, it's reporting a crime or anything like that. I don't know that that really happened. I don't think the authorities are really looking for that. You know, what they just we're just trying to keep new people coming in. We don't know who it is that's going to be coming in, and th they shouldn't be getting New Mexico driver's license. If you want to get a driver's license, tell them to go to California. I they give them to them. Now, now uh, if this does pass and, and goes through and the governor signs it, when would this take effect? It's an emergency, so it would be July 1. Okay. All right. Well, um, I want to uh, thank you very much for um, being with us here. And um, I'd like to uh, also, you know, uh, say uh, congratulations on uh, representing your district. and. Uh, your your election and um, uh, good luck in Santa Fe this well, year. Well, thank you. Session. You betcha. Thank you much. All right. Our guest was Representative Elect Andy Nunez. We'll be right back. And we're back. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Anthony Moreno. Here to continue the conversation on House Bill 32 is Vicki Gobeca. Vicki is director of the ACLU New Mexico's Regional Center of four border rights. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now I'd like to hear a little bit about your concerns with this bill and your organization's stance on it. Well, I mean, I think that in general, um, since uh, the Governor Martinez has been elected, she has made it sort of a point to try to repeal the driver's license um, act here in, in New Mexico. And I think that we're concerned mostly about the public safety issues related to a repeal and what implications that would have um, to New Mexican residents. Tell me a little bit about those implications and what you believe they, they are. Well, I mean, I think that the governor has made a big, um, has created a, a dialogue, a conversation around how this is a public safety issue. And in fact, I think that it is a public safety, we, we think it is a public safety issue. However, um, it's not sort of in the, the same lens that she uses um, when she talks about public safety. I mean, we think that it actually enhances public safety for New Mexico residents. How does it do that? Well, in, in several different ways, actually. Um, um, for the local law enforcement officials, um, it's, it's a help to them to know exactly who they're pulling over and stopping during routine traffic stops or during um, investigations. Uh, that they're conducting and the advantage of having a driver's license is that it will show your last known resident and is actually a government issued ID that tells individuals who you are and where you you know at least your last known residence is and so that I think that from that perspective 
it actually enhances public safety. Another, and, and the other additional piece to public safety is that individuals, and there are about 90,000 individuals here in New Mexico who have, who are immigrants who have driver's licenses and who just drive to work or school or to drop off their children or go to uh, shopping or to go to a health care facility or whatever their needs are for driving. And um, these individuals have at all taken written exams, eye exams, have, you know, taken uh, a driving uh, like, you know, driving exam, a uh, driving lesson to know how to drive. And from our perspective, I much rather have, uh, you know, on the road, somebody who's licensed and insured than somebody who's not. So the proposal to take away these licenses away from 90,000 people actually increases the pool of uninsured drivers in the state. And it also increases um, the possibility of, of drivers who who um, perhaps you know haven't gone through the strict requirements of getting a driver's license. Well, I'm glad you brought up insurance. Um, you know, it, New Mexico hasn't exactly ranked high when it comes to insured motorists. Has mm -hmm. this law allowing undocumented immigrants to obtain New Mexico State driver's license improved that? Fine. Do you know anything? Absolutely. It has dropped from I think when Governor Richardson first you know implemented this, or actually I think it was legislature, New Mexico legislature first implemented it. Our uninsured rate was around 21 percent. Now it's down to nine percent. So I think that there has we have seen a drop of uninsured drivers in New Mexico. I want to get back to one of the numbers that you said. You said 90,000 immigrants. Did you mean 90,000 undocumented immigrants or just immigrants in general? Uh, in general, New Mexico, the estimates for undocumented people here is between 80 and 90,000. So it's sort of a rough number of people who would be eligible for driver's licenses and that who currently use these driver's licenses in New Mexico, although that number might vary, you know. Crafters of this House Bill uh, 32 that was filed say that this is not only a public safety issue but a security issue and that there is a con growing concern that there are undocumented immigrants fleeing from other states to come to New Mexico to obtain some sort of legal ID using whether fraudulent documents or not um, and then going about to whatever business they may be doing whether it may be um, a criminal activity or something like that. I was wondering uh, if you had a response to that in, in general or if that is really happening? Well, I mean, I would say that, that fraud is a valid concern. However, um, I would suggest that um, that's not the way to solve the problem by discriminating against a whole class of people. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. I mean, we probably um, have uh, certain people under the age of 21 who will engage in, in creating or getting access to fraudulent licenses so that they can purchase alcoholic beverages, right? Our response shouldn't be to say, okay, well, everybody under 21 shouldn't get a license, a driver's license. Our response is, however, to create a more secure process for licenses, for getting licenses. And I don't know, I mean, when I came here to New Mexico in 2009, it I realize how difficult it was to get a driver's license. I mean, it's not a walk in the park. They're already Tell me about that. Tell me yeah. about your experience I mean, about coming here in sure. 2009 and trying to obtain a driver's license. Sure. I mean, I had to show, um, you know, two, not only did I have to show the standard, you know, photo ID and social security card, uh, but I also had to show two proofs of residency here in New Mexico. So I had to show my my lease uh, for the department that I, the house that I was renting at the time, and so and, and some kind of utility bill. I mean, they, everybody has to sort of show two proofs of residency. It's so, and I know that people who he, are come here without documents, there are similar requirements. However, they need to make an appointment, and they really have to show that they're residents here in New Mexico. And the other thing is that sometimes they show a tax ident identification number, which means that they actually pay tax state and local taxes here in New Mexico. So that's, if we were to talk about the economic argument, which is another argument we can talk about, it just, first of all, seems like a very um, rigorous process that you go through to get a driver's license. 
So our focus and our solution to the problem to fraud should be creating a more rigorous driver's license and not necessarily to ban the use of it um, of, of people who are here driving, who are going to be driving anyway to get to work and school and drop off their kids in school, et cetera. Well, crafters of this bill um, say that, you know, this is a solution. Um, we will allow the undocumented who are eligible to obtain a driver's permit um, with an expiration date, of course, mm -hmm. on it. Um, what are the problems with that? I think the fundamental problem with this, with this proposed bill, um, the HB 32 by um, Mr. Pacheco, is that it creates what we call a scarlet letter type of identification. So that police officers who pull people over who show this kind of license, right away they're going to know what their immigration status is. And a, a driver's license shouldn't be, it's not a passport, it's not a tourist visa, it's not, it's not something that serves to inform our public officials about what their immigration status. It is basically a document that tells people who they are, hopefully where they live, depending if they've updated their address, right? And then, um, you know, basically it is somebody that, something that informs you of who I am, so I can sort of establish my identity, right? But it's not an immigration document. You mentioned, uh, I'm sorry, you mentioned a scarlet letter. I mean, do you, do you mean that this is something that is going to unfairly target an undocumented person? I think it opens up a Pandora's box as far as, you know, individuals using these licenses to open uh, checking accounts or for housing or for things like that that they're entitled to receive um, some kind of discrimination. So I think th there is concern there. Okay. Um, I'm just curious in general, I mean, the, the um, push behind for this bill is that, okay, there's many people coming from many different countries to obtain legal driver's licenses in New Mexico. Uh, we need to put a stop to that is what they're saying. So we're, we want to push this bill forward. Uh, well, how exactly do you have any data on how uh, transient the undocumented population is here in the United States? How transient? Or how um, mobile it is? I mean, do, or is it moving around quite a bit or is it I mean, more? I, think, I what? think that what we do know is that, that, um, that people will drive to work, that they will drive to drop off their kids to school, that they're going to be driving out on the roads, and that really our interest should be focused on that public safety message. We want people who are licensed, who are insured on the roads of New Mexico. Okay. Now, speaking of the, the New Mexico in general, it's just another state in the country that is a part of this driver's license debate. It seems like the national trend is going the other way. Could exactly, you? exactly. I mean, when Governor Martinez was first elected, there was only two states that offered driver's licenses to undocumented driver, uh, undocumented individuals who didn't have work authorization in this country. And now it's, nine st it's seven states plus Puerto Rico and the District of Columbia. So it seems like we, you know, we are going in the opposite direction of what makes sense for public safety and, you know, again, the economic benefit also of having people who are licensed and insured driving um, on New Mexico's roads. Tell me a little bit about how something, a bill like this can impact um, DREAMers or, uh, you know, uh, undocumented immigrants who are part of the DACA program. Well, I'm not really clear that the people who are going to be part, I mean, who are eligible for DACA are going to have access to these driver's licenses, and it appears that this bill doesn't really include that. Um, where in, in Arizona, they recently did the opposite. They, they, they there was a decision that came down that said that DACA, people who are eligible for deferred action of, for childhood arrivals, they are eligible to be in this country for two years, and starting in February, they're gonna be eligible to be in this country for three years with a work authorization. They should be able to drive comfortably to work and to you know, do whatever errands that they have to do. Uh, and so it's very important that any kind of driver's license needs to at least, and, and again, this is why I go back to that, um, the, the message or the, the, the concept that driver's license aren't about immigration status. They're about making sure that people on the roads um, are, know how to drive and, and uh, are insured. In your opinion, why are laws like this being pushed forward? Is it just the failure of um, 
the federal government or Congress to reach a comprehensive immigration reform? I think that's contributing to it, and I think it, it. I think again that speaks to how do we address this problem, right? I think instead of focusing on energies on things that actually may prove to be detrimental to New Mexicans, we should focus on things that actually will improve things and really on just and fair immigration reform. And you talked a little bit about public safety. You talked about insured. If an undocumented person uh, was, you know, presented a license like this with, you know, the identification notifying uh, officials that they were undocumented, is this going to impact them in perhaps uh, responding to uh, some sort of observance of criminal activity or reporting things to police or anything like that? Exactly. I mean, I think that for a long, it's, it's well known that in, in best police practices, uh, there is a community policing model that is the foundation for that is community trust. And if an, in, if an individual is afraid to report or, or act as a witness to a crime uh, because they're afraid that they're going to be deported, that sort of interrupts that, that trust that they have with local law enforcement. And it actually then winds up resulting undermining public safety for everyone, right? So we want to encourage people to participate in reporting criminal activity to and in and, and reporting their witnessing of criminal activities. And so that Scarlet Letter will also inhibit people from doing that. You know, you mentioned um, the Scarlet Letter, other things that could um, really uh, hurt people who are undocumented and, and are living here and working. Um, are What other things that do the undocumented um, here in New Mexico and around the country face on a daily basis in regards to situations like this? What other, I mean? Uh, with, in regards to being, um, you know, f fearful or f the feeling of living in the shadows, from what people say. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, as, in general as a country, we should probably step back and look at our immigration policy, which hasn't been updated in decades, uh, with a few exceptions of being the executive actions or executive decisions that were made by Obama's administration. But I think we do need to step back and look at the whole picture. And for a long time, it's been, the focus has been on border security and on, you know, sort of this um, going after immigrants. And, and we've forgotten how important immigration is to the country, how it contributes to our economy, how it, how it uh, brings a lot of good things to our country. I mean, one out of 24 jobs in the United States is, is it depends on the trade that we have with Mexico. For example, um, we need immigrants to come to this country to shore up our social security system. We need immigrants in this country in a different way, and for some reason we've lost touch with that. And instead of focusing on these very short-term goals or, or, or you know things that we think solve the problem on the short term, we should probably be stepping back and looking at the big picture and say, well, how do we solve this problem in a way that's a win-win situation for everyone and actually uh, meets the, 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 the core values in, in this country of justice and fairness and moves our, our, our country ahead? Uh, I'd, I'd like to hear a little bit more, I mean, about uh, what your organization is doing here on the border and uh, what your mission is. Uh, well, basically, in general, our mission is really um, addressing uh, civil and human rights violations that stem from border-specific immigration policy. Now, basically what that means is that we want to create, um, ensure that border residents have dignity and access to our constitutional rights along the U.S.-Mexico border. And unfortunately, because of the way we've approached immigration reform and the only things that are really coming out of, uh, you know, the the congressional, uh, the, the last Congresses have been mostly just border security and very little bit of accountability over uh, and oversight over border security, we're seeing an increase in human and civil rights violations. So that's basically our mission. We want to make sure that the Constitution still applies here in the border region, that it applies for Liz Cruzans and people living in Hatch and to their consequences, that those rights, you know, apply here. I'm a little curious, you know, the midterms are over, elections, mm -hmm. um, now people will focus soon on the presidential election in 2016. Is the national rhetoric changing a little bit when it comes to talking about a comprehensive immigration reform 
uh, approach, I guess? I mean, I think right now from our perspective, it, it seems like there, there is a focus still on, on border security that's unnecessary uh, from our perspective because all we've seen really is an increase in border security resources along the U.S.-Mexico border, almost to the point where um, it's enough. Yet in Washington, D.C., they still think they want more. They still want more resources at the U.S.-Mexico border. And that's a, a bit puzzling because I think we need to shift the conversation back towards how do we create that just and fair immigration reform that better meets the needs of the country. I see. Well, uh, I want to thank you very much for joining us and sure. uh, discussing this topic. Well, thank you for having me. All right. Our guest was Vicki Galbeca. She is director of the ACLU New Mexico's Border Center for Human Rights. I'm Anthony Moreno. Happy New Year to you. We're starting another year of programming for Fronteras at Changing America. Thank you for joining us.